Welcome to another session of our lecture, university lecture, successful negotiation and communication. Last time we talked a little bit about the basics of motivation as a prerequisite or as an underlying psychological concept to better uh, be in a position to effectively address uh, the needs and wants of other people. And uh, in order to understand them in a better way, we discussed um, one widely used uh, common personality or individuality tool which is called the MBTI, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. And um, we talked about the different kind of dimensions and I also uh, recommended to you that you do one of those kind of tests, uh, whether it's this one or whether it's the disk system or whether it's big five, doesn't make any, doesn't make any difference. Uh, what is always very important to stress and to emphasize is that one personality is not better uh, in any way than uh, another one. However, um, certain kind of tasks, of course, call for different kind of strength, different kind of capabilities, different kind of passion. And uh, therefore also um, there's a very, very strong link and connection between the MBTI or uh, the DISC or the Big Five and what you, uh, what you do, what you can accomplish, how you lead people, how you're being led, how you can be motivated and how you're trying to convince or motivate other people. Um, let's go, uh, go on to the, uh, to the next section, which is the um, feedback. Uh, the feedback is the last um, section here and then we are through with the basics and uh, we can do our test. So it's not a, a, a rated or graded test, but however, it's a little fun game, a quiz. Um, so feedback. What is the feedback? What is feedback? And of course, we are all aware what, what feedback is. But all too often, we realize that during professional life and private life, feedback is not always granted, given in an appropriate way. So feedback is, first of all, um, you should always try to feedback on other people. Um, it is a response to a person based on their behavior and how it is perceived because uh, basically, and we talked about that before, uh, the problem of communication or the challenge of communication is that the reception uh, being done by the receiver is sometimes in uh, misconjunction or not in line with the intention of the sender. That is the problem, not that there is any kind of conflict as uh, what the contents is about but sometimes there is a conflict because there's what we call a noise uh, being derived out of the fact that there is a um, incongruency between uh, the intention and the reception so feedback helps to avoid that uh, what is the principal uh, uh, basic understanding of feedback what is the effect of feedback first it is very very good um, to check the self-image and we talked about that before. I said that uh, at Shell, we had a very, very um, simple tool. So instead of just having this uh, 360 degrees feedback, I think we talked about that before, 360 degrees feedback. Uh, we mentioned that before. Uh, this is a really a, a management tool which you have in big uh, organizations. If you uh, once work for a big enterprise, big organization, I would strongly recommend uh, try to do this, try to do 360 degrees uh, feedback. So this is you and basically you're getting feedback from your superior, you're getting feedback from your subordinates, from your peers, and also you're getting feedback from uh, those kind of angles here. So basically this is why it's called the 360 feedback. You're getting feedback from all levels of hierarchy, from your peers, from your colleagues, from um, superior uh, from your line managers uh, from everywhere it is very 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 good um, and what we had at shell was uh, we had a very very simple tool uh, when we had executive meetings or seminars or workshops and i've write it again so we had a little um, sheet which says to and then you type in the name and we say this person should stop to continue to and uh, start to and you fill it out and uh, you give it to the um, to the person, not personally, but this is uh, collected uh, separately and uh, so it's anonymous. Um, and that is a very, very powerful uh, way of checking the self-image. Now I saw that there was, uh, I think, some, some blue note popping up here. Could the 360 degrees uh, feedback 
be a bit intimidating? Yes, of course it could be, uh, Carlos, because um, if there is a big discrepancy between um, your own perception, your, your self-image and how you're perceived by others, it can be, I wouldn't say a shock, but <laughs> it can be, of course, a little bit intimidating to you. Because, uh, for example, you perceive, um, I don't know, uh, your communication skills or motivation skills with respect to leading employees as a kind of a virtue. Um, but other people are, are, um, are saying that there's a lot of uh, room for improvement here with respect to this kind of uh, competence or core competence. So it could be, uh, of course, intimidating to people. Um, however, it, it, um, it signals to you whether what you perceive to be a strength of, uh, of yours um, is really perceived to be a strength by others as well. And um, so feedback is very, very substantial in checking the self-image. Everybody has a picture of oneself, so the self-image. And of course, everybody has a picture, like saying, um, of others, of brands, of um, people, of political parties, of uh, political incidents. And the self-image and the external image are almost never the same. Um, and therefore, we said if there is little deviation between um, the self-image and the outward image, this external image, it is okay. But sometimes there is a big gap uh, when it comes to certain kind of criteria. So the more openly and honestly people communicate with each other and perceive each other, the better uh, one is able and can check one's self-image and adjust it if necessary. However, it is very important to stress um, that this is, of course, also a cultural thing because in um, also feedback, um, if you provide a more direct feedback to people in certain parts of the world, so for example, in Asia, um, this is perceived as being a very substantial attack on the personality of the other person. So this has to always to be seen and, con and considered in the cultural context. What is the effect on behavior? Behind every act or behavior is an intention, of course, and every behavior has an effect and is experienced differently by others. And, and, and that is what we discussed uh, as well. So, for example, you remember um, George W. Bush looking at the watch, uh, making a, <laughs> a quick check on whether he probably, whether he's on time or not during the presidential debate, the town hall debate. Um, and he lost, he lost the election. Um, in the end, he lost people, people said, because he was looking at the watch, because this had a, um, a negative effect. So this kind of behavior had a negative effect on his personality and how he's perceived to be handling uh, the crisis. And currently, being in a global pandemic, we can, uh, we can see that, um, interestingly, I'm not commenting on that, but um, of course, if you just look at German politics or you look at US politics, you look at, at uh, uh, the politics been done in, uh, in France or in Italy, you can see that how people are communicating, what they are communicating has an ultimate and, and direct impact on the polls, on um, the, um, uh, the, uh, the potential results on, um, uh, of, uh, of uh, people voting. You can see that there is, uh, for example, there, there was a, a, a shift, a very, a, not, a, not only a German shift, but a global shift towards uh, more green thinking, environmentally concerned um, uh, awareness, let's put it this way, due to the Fridays for Future. Um, and now we can see that, for example, looking at, um, into Germany, looking into Italy, looking into France, that um, this is changing again because, uh, because of the crisis and people are more aware of other things now, right now at the moment. Some people, not all people, but some people are. And, of course, how the politicians in Germany, uh, for example, are communicating is directly impacting, of course, um, the polls. And um, you can see that very, very interestingly and impressively if you just look at the, uh, the recent uh, results coming from the um, research institutions. So through candid feedback, the receiver can learn how he affects others. Because if I'm not getting feedback, um, I told you about the story of uh, when I was walking by this um, 
finance department's lady's desk and I was making a joke or I thought I was making a joke and she was a little bit annoyed and she was complaining and I had to talk to the director. And in the end, I'm, I'm very, very thankful to her because I, I tell you again, if she would have never had this negative feedback, so she was not feedbacking me, to me directly. However, she was telling the director, oh, they are complaining about our work or the quality of our work. And he was addressing me. If she or he wouldn't have addressed me in a negative way, so it's a kind of negative feedback or negative impression that was coming across, I would have never been aware of what, ha what happened actually. Yeah. So the learning is here again, even negative feedback, criticism is better than no feedback. Because if she would have said nothing or he would have said nothing, then probably our relationship would have been distorted in some way. And I, I would have never been aware why this happened. Another thing is um, then uh, this is this is what, what I just mentioned. It helps you to clarify relationships in relationships. Many things are concealed. We are uh, we're talking about this hidden agenda and uh, through honest feedback. What is hidden becomes partially visible. Also, uh, if you look at the nonverbals, needs and wishes, pleasures, recognition can be exchanged, but also fears, personal affronts can be addressed. But you have to do it in a, in a sophisticated way, not in a way that is um, uh, talking about the transaction analysis that is from the um, parent level or from the ego state of the parent addressing the, uh, the ego state of the child. So not moralizing. And if you do this in an appropriate way, it can improve workability and climate in a substantial way, because in many groups, uh, groups feelings are swept under the carpet so they are not disclosed and when unattended to they often have a destructive effect so if they are not being addressed so it's better to have a, a kind of conflict um, being openly discussed than to always conceal that because then you always have um, a negative relationship with which is of course uh, impacting the work. A very uh, successful and interesting uh, model that has been um, coined and uh, invented by, uh, by uh, researchers is the Johari window. The Johari window shows the conscious and unconscious personality and behavioral elements between ourselves and other people. So the Johari window, you can also, um, I don't know why. Okay here. This is a, it's taken from uh, from my book here, uh, unknown uh, by others, known by others. This is known by me. This is unknown by me. So this is the public person. This is me as uh, as being a public person. This is what is known to me. I, I, I know about my weaknesses. I know about my strength um, and people perceive uh, me like this. So this is um, sometimes it is uh, a bit, uh, I don't know, enlarged if uh, people are very active on or talkative on or more outward people like me or they're, they're active on social media. But now what is most interesting, of course, is what is not known to me, this one, but what is known by others. So are there elements of my character, of my individuality? that are perceived by others in a certain kind of way that I'm not aware of. And this is what we call the blind spot. This is what we call the blind spot. It's like when driving a car and you have a blind spot and cars coming from behind. Uh, and you also call this blind spot. And uh, we all have, of course, a blind spot. And the blind spot can be reduced, can be this square here can become smaller if um, you ask for feedback if you constantly try to check whether your self image is kind of in line with the external image that others have about you, because every time others share with me about me information, how they perceive me also in a negative way, of course, not only saying, OK, this is what you're doing great uh, yeah, because probably you're you're aware of that, but um, and you get a recognition, you feel good. but. Um, that people are saying, 
by the way, I like um, your style in handling this um, this kind of activity. And you say, oh, really? Okay, uh, I was not aware of that. So it could also be um, a hidden strength or a hidden kind of uh, trait in your character that um, you're, you don't perceive to be, um, I don't know, shining or you don't perceive it to be a big much of a virtue. But other people are saying, uh, more people are feedbacking um, on you and saying, oh, wow, this is really cool. And I like what you're doing here in this respect. In the other, um, on the other hand, of course, there, there may be negative um, criticism that people are saying, oh, wow, um, uh, you come across as being very arrogant or very offensive or um, you're coming too much across as being a teacher and trying to moralize and, 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 and I often realize that if you're talking to your uh, your children or to subordinates etc etc and um, I think you're not really like that but you come across as being like that and that is a good kind of feedback for example that may be creating some additional awareness as to how you're communicating uh, with uh, with other people. Then there's, of course, um, something you may reveal. So this is unknown by others. So you may reveal um, a kind of, a, I don't know, an, an uncertainty about certain kind of things. And you say, okay, I'm always a bit hesitant when it comes to this and that. And this is because I reacted in, 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 in such a way. So um, you uh, enlarge the segment here of the public person and then there is also uh, some, some behavior or some trademarks which are unknown by others, unknown by me. This is what we call this unknown, unconscious uh, conscious feel. Uh, most importantly is uh, here the blind spot to reduce uh, the blind spot of yourself um, through open, candid uh, feedback and asking for that. So not, not only giving feedback to others, but ask for, uh, for feedback. So one goal of learning in group dynamics and in the context of feedback is to make the common room available for maneuver and more transparent. In the Juhari window uh, tool, when the upper left box, so this public person gets bigger, the other three decrease in size. Because um, that is also, uh, of course, uh, the logic here of the window. So if this uh, window gets bigger, the other, uh, the other windows get smaller. So the blind spot gets smaller, meaning reveal oneself that is going down what I, what, I, what I just mentioned by telling and sharing personal secrets or insecurities, for example, to minimize the burden of operating in secrecy or share observations by sharing up the observations about blind spots directly with a person affected. You gain trust and knowledge about them and can perceive uh, what room for maneuver exists. So both approaches complement each other and they help um, to you to make um, a more convincing, uh, uh, yeah, to come across as being more convincing, as uh, coming across as being more um, aware of yourself and also aware and understanding of the needs and wants of others. So what are basic uh, feedback rules? We all know about them. First, uh, solicited. Feedback should be requested by the recipient. So um, ideally, or you may ask, but uh, however, uh, don't just feedback on people. Um, this may be coming across uh, as being very, very offensive or very much uh, uh, talking from, from, um, from above. So talking down, to, uh, looking down at other people. So this uh, parent um, child perspective. Uh, looking at the transaction analysis. So he should want to learn something about himself. So um, you say, okay, I observed uh, something and I want to feed it back uh, to you in order to help you develop your uh, personality or to tell you what kind of, uh, I don't know, impression I got. Is that okay for you? So it should be descriptive. The feedback provider should describe what he sees or hears regarding the observable behavior. So no assessing interpretation or searching for motives at this moment in time. Then it needs to be concrete. So the encoder describes the concrete situations, not you always, I don't know, you're never listening when I'm talking to you, are you? Uh, so uh, this is very much generalizing and this is often uh, a, a kind of a killer feedback that is given in uh, in private life to your, uh, to your partners or that you, you're getting by your partners. Um, there's a... Uh, uh, Yes, I'm, I'm glad that I'm getting feedback as well here from Carlos. 
What would you do if you were to receive a feedback that doesn't follow these results? Yeah, that happens quite often actually, um, that, uh, that you get it on a personal level uh, by your partner or by, uh, by, by other people. Um, then it is also, um, it is not helpful uh, to fight back, for example. So if somebody is criticizing you in a very generalistic way, right? You're always doing like that and then you're never listening. And again, you did something like that. It doesn't help that or you do it yourself, etc. to fight back because um, the best thing you can do is always um, uh, to, uh, to try to understand where the other person is coming from, right? And uh, that uh, to tell th 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 this, this uh, I call that not doing uh, karate, but doing judo. Um, so take the, uh, the velocity, take the power of the other person um, and use it to your benefit. Karate is more uh, attacking the other person as well. But this doesn't help because you're attacking then the self-esteem of the other person. It is better to try to understand where the other person is coming from. If somebody is like... I mentioned that before, um, the feedback I was getting from the student uh, with respect to the first book I wrote um, was very, very negative. It was, um, it was not very substantial. It was uh, in a rude tone. So I could have, it was un inappro inappropriate, right? So it was not following at all any of those rules. However, I reacted in a judo way. So I said, if I were you, I would feel the same. I would be disappointed as well. And um, you get the feeling that uh, the book is not okay because of A, B, C, D, E. And I, I, I acknowledge that. And in order to, um, to make you feel better, I suggest we do this. So, and, and, and then the other, the, the other person feels understood because um, that is a powerful sentence. What, I can, uh, what can I do to, to make you feel better? That is a powerful sentence. What can I do to make you feel better? Um, yeah, in this in the in, in this respect. So that is what I always do, what I try doing, because that is also in line with um, the teachings of uh, Rosenberg. I mentioned that before. Um, uh, Gewaltfreie Kommunikation, um, so communication without violence. It is a famous um, researcher, a famous uh, all time guru when it comes to communication, uh, communication without violence. Uh, look for that. That is a very, very good book. It's also in my book. There's also a chapter on um, uh, communication without violence. So uh, I hope this answered uh, your question, uh, Carlos. So um, I appreciate that. Um, please use the chat function to make it a bit more interactive. That's fantastic. I, I, I like that. Appropriate. The point is that the receiver learns something about himself, something that helps him or helps her to better understand his own self in the world. So to check his self image and, 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 and how far is it congru congruent with the external image. So what is the, f uh, the feedback process like? Ideally, in an ideal world, I said we called uh, the feedback we had at Shell, we called gift of feedback, gift of feedback, gift is um, if you're gifted to do something, a gift is also a present you give to somebody, right? So it's a kind of a present you're giving to somebody. So ideally, you have to follow the following uh, structure and scheme. I have observed that you are angry because you think that ABC, right? And this makes me feel XYZ. And because of that, my reaction was X, Y, Z. In the future, I would like you and suggest you do X, Y, Z. So that is a, a very, very um, a good scheme and process of a sophisticated of a sophisticated feedback, because it needs to be concrete. It need, does not need to be, or it must not be. It must not be generalistic. And the recipient thanks the giver for the feedback and takes some time to determine the important points. So that is in an ideal world, of course. I know that this is difficult um, 
in, in particular when it comes to communicating across cultures and communicating across different levels. Because if you're communicating among, uh, among your peers, so among your fellow student colleagues, that is much more easy because you're all on at the same kind of a level. But if you're communicating towards uh, people in the organization later or you work for that are superior to you or uh, subordinates, then of course it is, it is much more difficult because then there is an element of hierarchy, an element of power um, that enters this process as well. Finally, um, and then we are through um, for today basically already, um, we summarize uh, this first big uh, chapter um, which comprises all the psychological tools and elements that are important in the framework of negotiation communication processes. We talked about um, we talked about the iceberg model of communication. We talked about Schultz von Thun uh, model of communication. We talked about the transaction model of communication, which is very, very important and often used in mediation processes, for example. We talked about the Socrates uh, method. We talked about um, the, uh, the axioms of communication according to, uh, to Václavík. Uh, we talked about the, uh, like I said, in the transaction analysis about the different kind of ego states. We talked about the importance of motivation and, uh, and how um, people are different on how to tune in to the wavelength of the other person observing carefully observing his personality and in this respect we discussed the Myers-Briggs uh, type indicator test and we talked about the self-esteem how important it is not to attack the other person that is also in line with the transaction analysis and with the uh, thinking and theory of Harris uh, I'm okay uh, you are okay and now uh, we talked about the uh, Juhara window and to sum it up to wrap it up very simply speaking um, three uh, basic uh, basic points. First, doesn't sound very nice. Everyone is interested in mainly themselves. Um, that is not very nice uh, because we all think of ourselves or we like to be perceived as being altruistic and caring for the other person. However, um, people are mainly interested in themselves and what they want. So therefore, it is very uh, important to, um, to address this factor. So this, we mentioned that before, the what is in for me factor. Right. So in addition to material things which people care about, um, they uh, even they came more care more about recognition and acknowledgement. We talked about the psychological uh, principles be, uh, being behind, which is self affirmation or reaffirmation, reaffirmation. And they always want to avoid cognitive dissonance. We talked about the psychological concepts and the halo effect in this uh, in this respect. For, um, for example, Benjamin Franklin, um, the uh, former president of the United States of America, he refused, it is, it is uh, documented in, in one of the Carnegie books, he refused to open letters which were not addressed as to Her Majesty Benjamin Franklin, the president of the United States of America. So he said, oh, this is, uh, this is not very polite. So if somebody was writing out to the president of the United States of America, Mr. Benjamin Franklin, he was throwing that into the garbage. So he was not reading it. So uh, you can say this is very arrogant. The, uh, the question is here again, where's the other person coming from? And we talked a lot about this different kind of standpoints, uh, literally, and we also made uh, a bridge to philosophy and to, uh, to the uh, cave equation of Plato. Uh, so if somebody has uh, to be made to do something, you want to motivate somebody, this implies that the communication partner must be shown that it is in his interest. But because the other person is always interested in his agenda and whether it's an open agenda or it's a hidden agenda. So any attempt to convince somebody of something must place that person's interests at the center of all consideration. And that is a big art. And that is a big, big, big art. And that is uh, what we talked about uh, when I was referring to saint antoine d'Exupéry, the little prince. Um, if you want to build a ship, don't tell people what to do. Don't assemble men. Don't let them um, cut woods or uh, assemble, assemble wood or whatever, but teach them the longing for the endless ocean. And that is a big art. That is a talent. Um, and it's very important um, to understand here, uh, I was referring to that very, very often already, you have to be authentic. Don't try, uh, never ever try to simply 
take the input from this course or from my book or from other books and apply that in, uh, in practical life blindly. It has to be inside of you. And therefore, I, I, I said, I was referring to Galileo Galilei, I cannot teach you anything. I can only help you to find it in yourselves. I, can, uh, I cannot make you a better person, but I can help you to be the best of who you are. And that is very important to understand. Don't try, don't ever try to be somebody else. Even if we talk about later, we talk about manipulation, we talk about influencing other people, we talk a lot about social uh, and sociology based concepts and psychological concepts, but then never, never just take it and try to apply in certain kind of situations in order to, uh, to come to an advantage because this will backfire on you. And it's most important to understand don't blindly apply. Um, but you recognize some of the, uh, and you already did, some of the aspects we talked about. You recognize, oh, wow, yeah, this is what I did before. Or um, now I understand certain kind of communication processes in a better way. Always argue with this background in mind and with an eye on the benefits to the partner, not to you, but to the partner. That is the big art. We talked about this entropy. We talked about Mandelbrot and Julia. Um, and uh, or take a cabbage and you break out a piece of a cabbage um, and this piece resembles the whole so that is the logic the other person has to recognize not only what is in for him but he has to be embedded in the solution and then you can uh, also resolve conflicts so the reasoning phase of the discussion should always focus on the points in which the parties agree and to their mutual advantages yeah that is that is very important. And if you do this in a sophisticated way, your communication partner practically guides the argument itself. And therefore, you have to ask at the beginning of the conversation, you have to ask more open questions. You try to best understand the other person. So I'm always saying first understand before being understood. So you have to combine the discussion with the objectives of the conversation partner to generate a win-win situation. Second, each communication takes place at various levels. Think about the iceberg model of communication we discussed. And think about, think about uh, Václavík, think about uh, Schulz von Thun, think about uh, Dr. Berner. Uh, uh, model of uh, transaction analysis. So not only uh, Schulz von Thun uh, stated that, but everybody um, I mentioned just before, it, it is, it is um, having the same kind of understanding that communication happens on, at, uh, at different kind of levels. So the course of many conflicts and unsuccessful negotiations, conversations accordingly consists of the fact that messages are often interpreted differently by the receiver than has actually been meant by the sender. I mentioned that before. So this is often because uh, we are communicating very, very much one um, dimensional. So only at the surface and we are not looking underneath the surface. So the receiver must therefore ready, be ready to address all levels, not only the actual level of, uh, of information. You have to be aware of all the a different kind of how you say tones or tonality of the uh, of the communication process and finally uh, i mentioned that before as well everybody has a beautiful sentence everybody is willing to change his mind unless he or she has not expressed it openly before so even if the recipient has not yet expressed his opinion about an issue it is very human much human nature to form an opinion about everything everybody we, we said that because we are making ourselves an image of something and then the world is what we think it is or what we want it to be or how we expect it to be that is the problem so we always have this kind of selective perception we always have this kind of filtering process which is of course um also strengthened by social media because you get more and more of the same. You get more and more of the same. Every time you open up the uh, the computer and you go to Google or you go to Yahoo or whatever, Bing doesn't make any difference. Or every time you, you turn on Spotify and listen to songs, you get more and more of the same, more of the same music, more of the same news, more of the same hobby uh, content, etc., etc. That is a problem because we are uh, philosophers uh, are arguing that 
we are living in this filter bubbles then. But that is more a philosophic um, aspect here. But of course, it has a deep impact on society. And the more people are living in their filter bubbles, um, the more reluctant they are towards perceiving outside signals or signals being in contrast to their world. So, because otherwise, this would mean a change of mind for that and, 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 and the receiver uh, perceives this as to be, uh, I don't know, his world or his image of the world of the person of a political party being collapsing. And this is a kind of a loss of face. So a discussion should never be driven purely on the basis of arguments over positions. Because if the receiver has a different opinion, counter arguments are provoked and then you have a, something like a, uh, I don't know, a battle, right? So it is recommended to focus first on asking questions and then address that accordingly. And this was a very short, uh, very, very short uh, session, but um, it, is, it is a perfect time to end the, um, end the session here already because uh, we managed to get, uh, to get through uh, the first big section. We already uh, covered uh, about 100 slides already. Okay. <laughs> 91 um, and I stay in the line I end the recording here but uh, we have uh, time now to do our first uh, quiz because uh, in the other lectures I was doing a quiz after each kind of a section but here um, the, se the section here one is very very um, detailed and we talked about a lot of aspects here so thanks very much uh, first of all for your uh, for your time I stay in the line and uh, I see you for another session uh, about uh, successful negotiation in which we will discuss all the phases of a successful communication process um, one by one in chronological order. Thanks very much. Take care and bye bye.